What's going on, world? It's your boy Boom back at it again for this is fifty, man. We got a very special guest. Not only just a very Not special, only just a very top top uh, welterweights. Mm, I can say of all time, pretty much. We can make that argument. One of the top top ten. Shit. <laughs> you know, we got, we got the unified our former unified champ uh, Keith, one time Thurman in the building, man. Keith, it's a pleasure having you here. Pleasure speaking with you, man. How how how's everything going? How you staying out the way with this whole COVID situation? Oh man, just doing my best, man. You know, uh, trying to stay focused, trying to stay uh, mentally strong. Uh, it's been it's been a tough year, uh, but you know, I was we got one of our boys got his pro debut in the bag this year, so we were happy for him. Uh, trying to support some of our up and comers. And uh, just doing me, man, just doing me, waiting on this, uh, waiting on my date. I'm supposed to be getting a date real soon, waiting on that. And um, just just staying ready, man, staying focused. No doubt, no doubt. I mean, you stay busy throughout the year, you know, commentating, which is great. It's great seeing you share your boxing wisdom and analyst, analytic skills where uh when you waiting on your next fight um but i want to ask you man i know a lot of fighters um didn't really get a chance to do anything this year with the whole covid situation but i want to ask man from you being a fighter would you say that uh the pandemic was kind of a gift and a curse for fighters who are trying to you know heal up get back to 100 percent uh, yeah, man, you know, I mean, you want to be able to heal up and you want to be able to, uh, test the waters, you know, you want to go ahead and get your tune-ups out of the way, uh, this and that, um, it's, it's very smart, you know, for me, I just like great fights. I don't, I'm tired of tuning up anything, you know, I just want to, I just want to be a dog. I want a great fight, you know, uh, that's why it's respectable what Arrow did, you know, he coming off of a major surgery and he took on a legitimate challenger, Danny Garcia, you know, um, you know, he didn't look like, he didn't look like the old Spence, but he didn't look like, uh, he didn't look like he wasn't capable of doing more, you know, like, I, I feel like he is capable of doing more, uh, you know, and I know what that what that feels like. When I fought Jose Cito Lopez, I knew I was going to perform. I knew I was going to win, but I knew I was going to be capable of doing more. You know, I, I knew that it wasn't going to be um, my best performance, man. And sometimes you got to do that, you know. Sometimes you got to do that, you know. That's why I say, you know, you got to box hard and box smart, man. As long as you come prepared and you understand who you in the ring with, this is just a one-on-one. -on -one. You can only fight one fighter at a time. Ain't nobody going to jump you in this sport, you know? So at the end of the day, man, you know, you just got to be prepared for that, for that individual man and, and what he brings to the table, man. And um, that's the way that I look at the fight game, you know, and as much as you can, you know, just stay ready, man, no matter how annoying it is and all this stuff it's a pain in the ass. It's been a pain in my a lot throughout my career, you know, but it's going to benefit a lot of those, a lot of those people coming off of this, that layoffs, whatever, do your best to just keep putting in work. No doubt. No doubt. Like I see you talking about Earl and whatnot, but uh, man, I want to ask you, speaking of the fight game, man, like you coming off just your first loss, like the first loss of your career, but you was literally knocking uh -huh. out the whole time, like, and really showing out as a champion and then to come off one loss, I mean, even though it is to Pacquiao or whatnot, but you just coming off one loss, is it um, is it uh, disheartening to you that the that the the sport like pretty much like not writes you off, but pretty much puts you like, oh yeah, he lost, so it's time to move on to somebody else or somebody else's star attention or something like that now, so. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a funny sport like that. It can be fickle like that, you know. But to me, knock knock me down, watch me get up. Beat me, watch me win again. You know what I mean? Um, real champions, you go throughout the history of boxing, man. Being a real great champion, Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, being a real great champion, Muhammad Ali, you know, uh, being a real great champion, Mike Tyson, you know. You don't, you know... It's not about losing. It's about, you know, sometimes 
it's not what happens, you know, like he lost today. What's he going to do tomorrow? You know, I don't write nobody off on a single loss. You know what I mean? But I know other people do outside of that. For me, it's when somebody loses and then they take that back to back L and then maybe they get a little win and then they take another L Mm -hmm. like they, 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 they lost their focus, man. They lost their heart. Um, like shoot, was uh Devin Alexander at one time of his career, he was going through a rough patch, you know. Uh, we we we've seen it happen throughout the sport of boxing, you know. Um, sometimes somebody loses and people figure out, you know, like like um Danny Garcia, you know, he didn't beat me, he didn't beat Sean, he didn't beat Spence. Beat Sean once. You know, what's up? He beat Sean once. No. No. Mm. No. That's how Sean got the title, and that's how Arrow got the title. Yeah. They yeah. they fought for my vacated title. They fought for my vacated yeah. title when when I, when I unified, and then they fought for the vacated title. And you know, I mean, Danny. He was in the fight, you know, to a degree with me. He definitely was in the fight with Sean Porter. Sean Porter outworked him. And he wasn't, like, in it in it with Spence, but he was actually in it. <laughs> but he don't understand the numbers game, and you can't not throw a lot of punches and just win rounds because <laughs> you because you landed a right hand or you landed a left hook. Like, it's nice. You know, when you land, Danny, it's, it's nice, but where's the follow-up? Where, what's after that? Where's the jabs in between? What, what, what's the, you know, you got to put on a show. Um, yeah. For those who don't know, you got to put on a show because <laughs> they, 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 there ain't just fans watching. There's these judges, man. And out of all those fans that love you and hate you, and somebody's going to tell you, man, you kind of had that fight. Man. Everyone's going to tell you, you did good. You know, you ain't get knocked out. You got somebody who, who ride in your back. Say, nah, man, you did good. He ain't do nothing. And at the end of the day, man, I don't think I don't think EJ really beat him up. I don't think EJ put a lot of hands on him. I just think that some people they don't, you know, at that level, I always never favor Danny. Anytime they say, What what do you think about Danny? This, Danny, that I don't favor him beating the top Walter Waits because we have more output than him. We have more athleticist, uh, athletic abilities than him. And uh, you know, he He's not stepping up to the plate, man. You know, you want to you wanna hit a home run, you got to swing, bat a bat a swing, baby. You know, <laughs> not the last 10 seconds of the 12th round. You know, not the last 10 seconds of the 12th round. He'd do that four more times in the fight, and it would have been a good fight. You know, just, just put in that effort. You know what I mean? Right. Act like you want to be champion. Act like you want two belts in one day. You know what I'm saying? Right. But uh, it is what it is, man. No doubt, no doubt. Now, another thing I would ask you, man, even after your loss to Pacquiao, you had already accomplished so much unifying unifying the titles. Did you ever think about just being like, well, I would just take this loss and move up in, in, uh, in rank? Uh, nah, because there's just too much action at 147. Um, you know, I want my get back anyways, if possible, <laughs> you know. I, want, I wanted my get back yesterday today and tomorrow, you know, uh, because that's just how I feel, man. You know, I'm coming off of a loss, but I'm the kind of champion that's going to come right back. Pacquiao lost throughout his career, and look at all the accomplishments he had throughout his career. You know, that's what real great champions do. They can take an L, move on, and you'll see the strap. You'll see the strap back where it belongs eventually, man. You know, you might see more than one. You might see more than one, man. The show's not over. You know, there's there's great competition at 147. Yeah. EJ can say whatever he wants to to interview people about, <laughs> you know, fuck Keith Thurman. He can say whatever he wants, but <laughs> I still would be the greatest fight you ever had, boy. I'd be the greatest <laughs> challenger you ever been in the ring with, boy. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no Danny Garcia. I ain't no Sean Porter. Why are you fighting my competition, boy? You don't want to fight me, boy. Come on now. You're trying to out, nah, out- nah, show nah, me. Come on, say, man. I mean, now uh, he did call this you out for a while. He can say he called you out for a while and you didn't you didn't really uh 
take interest to it, I guess I would say. And then now turn it's like the tables have turned, would you say? I wasn't going to fight him last year when my hand was injured. You know, uh, I had people advise against taking the Pacquiao fight, but the pride in me said, I don't care if my hand hurt. I get a chance to punch a legend. Yeah. I got to take it, baby. I, and, and, and the fight is a fight that I wanted for freaking what? Since I was 25 years old. You want to talk about waiting for a fight? I called out Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao when I was 25. You want to talk about waiting for a fight? You know what I'm saying? That's that's why that stuff is all petty, man. If you know, we in the same industry, same industry. If you know that's a great fight, it's a great fight. Ain't nothing changing that. You know what I mean? You just you just went and did that that show. You did the Danny show. I mean, I mean, what I bring to the ring is just more entertaining than anybody else at 147. Y'all can keep the belts. Y'all can keep the belts. You still can't beat Keith Thurman. Y'all can keep the belts. I put a man, I just put on a better show. I put on a better show, man. That's how I feel. Uh, that's how I've always felt. And, you know, and they all can get the smoke, man. Come come test the boy Keith Thurman. Come through the Thurman test. While <laughs> I'm hungry, coming off an L. They beat one time, one time, yada, yada. Beat one time, two times. Who that man? Who that man <laughs> beating one time, two times? Now, Who that another, man? now, another person that is calling you out right now is, uh, is Virgil Ortiz. Like, I know you haven't shown him much attention, being that he's still up and coming as, as well, and he can't, you know, he can't step in your light and fill your shoes. So how do you feel about when people call people like him up and coming, like really hungry, like you were at one time calling you out and asking you for a fight? Um, you know, it's great. You know, um, it just showed me that, you know, I really am 32. I'm not 22. I'll tell you that, you know, I'm, I'm 32. I'm not 22. Uh, like you said, I've accomplished a lot of great things in the sport already. Um, there, there was always going to be a day where there was going to be the young bucks coming up that are going to have to uh, uh, fight those who are and those who were and and everything of that nature. And, um, you know, he thinks he can get through one time. You know, he's, he's adamant. He's got a team of people behind him saying he's got the skills and talent, you know. But, you know, if he's calling me out, then that means, you know, he thinks he got a lot to offer the whole division, baby, because like I said, man, um, yeah. when, I, when I'm in that ring, it's exciting, you know? So this young buck must be trying to bring a lot of excitement to the Walter Wade division. And I could, um, I look forward to continue, continually see what he does. I've seen like a highlight or two, but yeah, let's just see what this boy do. You know, um, he, he definitely looks talented and, um, you know, I don't got a whole lot to say, but that's all I got to say. Well, I want to ask you, man, um, in the eighties and nineties, the heavyweight division was like legendary for its fights, its uh, its fighters, its character, its uh, its extravaganza, its magnitude, everything. But it seems like in the 2000s now, the welterweight division has always been the most exciting fights. Even with, I mean, you could say credit to Mayweather for making that happen for you guys, as far as like making everything such a spectacle. And whatnot, not even just Mayweather, like De La Hoya, like uh, even Manny Pacquiao, and whatnot, making it a spectacle. Oh yeah. But um, I would say, man, for those that for those uh, not so or not the average boxing fan, what is it about the welterweight division that has become so legendary now? That has taken over the heavyweight spot and just pretty much, if you're not Deontay Wilder or Anthony Joshua, or Tyson Fury, it really doesn't matter what you're talking about. Like, the welterweight division is the top, like, the top-selling division, like, especially PBC, because you guys are Yeah. Strong. Yeah, we just, there's just so much talent, man. You know, it, it's just such a talented division, and it's one of those divisions that are going to stay talented, because at the end of the day, when I, when I step on the scale and I weigh 147, you know, I can technically probably go buy, you know, a, a small T-shirt from the men's section, you know, and it's going to fit, you know. So what I like to say about welterweights is we're the biggest of the little guys. It doesn't get you can't you can't be like you just can't 
we're right under middleweight, so we're not even we're not even mediums. That's why we mediums. You know what I'm saying? We're not even mediums. You know. Uh, but the best part about 147 is that we're the biggest weight class that gets to wear ten, uh, not 10 ounce gloves, but eight ounce gloves. We're the last weight class that gets to put on the smallest size boxing glove. And, you know, for the fans, they love hearing that. They love knowing they we putting on the itty bitties, you know. Uh, you move you move up one one weight class, you light, have, uh, light middleweight, middleweight, you wearing the same size gloves as heavyweights, you know. And, and that takes away just, a, you know, not ultimately, but it takes a little bit away of the danger factor. And Walter Waits, we just have the speed and the power and the athleticism with eight ounce gloves to deal a lot of damage to one one another, man. There's a lot of damage that can be dealt, um, a damage that can be felt. And the fans know when they're in the arena, they hear those blows, they see the hand speed, they see the movement, they hear the power echoing off the walls. And it's just some it's a type of entertainment that you're most likely not going to get from the heavyweight division, you know, outside Tyson Fury trying to float around the ring like a butterfly and 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 pick apart everybody with that jab and then and then hit him with a brick, you know. Um, <laughs> and and it's and it's, and, it, and it's phenomenal to see a heavyweight move like that. And the the reason why it's phenomenal is because you're normally witnessing that kind of movement in my division and lighter divisions, even in the middleweight division and light middleweight, you automatically start seeing less and less movement um, in boxing styles. On average, so that's what I think is so tremendous about the Walter Wade division is is just the speed, the power, the movement, and then we come to hurt each other. Eight ounce gloves, baby. No doubt, no doubt. And then speaking of you being an analyst, at some in between in between fights, uh, man, just as far as being an analyst now, have you looked at the sport differently inside the ring, seeing it from the outside and seeing what commentators are seeing, seeing and reporting the fights now do you see do you go in there with a fresh set of eyes now like when you go plan for your next fights you know each time i get out there i learn a little something you know you got uh uh just like every every uh sports network man you got you got somebody out there who knows all the stats man they're out there they get a little booklet they memorize these stats the little fighters past history whatever was talked about uh behind the scenes all access show whatever's being uh, wrapped about, and they'll, they'll throw in some little reminders for people that missed out on those opportunities. You know, maybe so and so is coming off of a, a loss. Maybe so and so is coming off of uh, uh, having their first kid. You know, small, just small things that, that make things really personal. You know, and and I, I picked up, I picked up some some little things that they do. But they're so good at what they do, I don't even want to be in that lane. <laughs> I don't want to be Mr. Statistic. You know what I mean? I'm here for the live action, baby. I'm here to let you know if, if that boy's ready to go or if he looks scared by round two, you know? Hey, uh, Keith, I want to ask you, man, how do you feel about social media um, in sports now? Like the whole promotion behind it and there are people finding real success behind promotion, behind social media, you know, getting on there, doing lives, trying to call people out, doing antics and whatnot how do you feel about that being a part of the sport now i mean it's 2020 man we always knew something would be different when we hit these numbers you know what i'm saying we knew we knew the world was going to be changing eventually man um it's just you got to go with the times man you got to go with the flow uh this is what what advertisement means today it means social media you know um so you know i don't I don't see nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, sometimes people can have a lot of fun with it. Um, we get to reach a spectrum of, of different kind of people, you know, definitely the young, the young generation and stuff. But nowadays, you know, even the older generation, they're getting uh, used to some of these apps um, and, and they're talking to people, they're following, they're following their family members. They wanna see what their niece and, and nephew is up to on, on their social media. You know, um, you know, some people are, are wilding, you know, and then uh, some people are real responsible with what they post on their on their social medias, man. And, um, you know, um, it is a social thing, you know, uh, as you know, it's a part of our society. And just like anything, man, just like drinking and driving, man, it's up to you to be responsible. It's up to you to put out what kind of what kind of message you want 
for for people to have and, and things like that. You know, you want to be wilding 24 seven. Welcome to the wilding out show. It is what it is. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, uh, it's it's very interesting because I, I just find it so flexible um, with what it's able to do and how it can catapult and just get people to pay attention, man. Even even um, back when I was fighting uh, Porter and stuff, just seeing the ads on um, on YouTube, you know, like small little promos and commercials and stuff. We used to not have that kind of stuff back in the day, you know? So nowadays they just know so much about content. What do you like? Do you follow people in boxing? Do you follow sports? If you follow sports, you might hear about an occasional boxing thing because it's sports related. You know what I mean? But are you really following boxing? Then they're going to throw up all the little knickknacks, this and that. You know, I got friends that they're like, anytime an article mentions me, they get the notification from Google or something. You know what I mean? We're just living in a new world, man. It's, it's a new world. It's exciting. I think it's exciting. You know, uh, it's a great opportunity for the young fighters. Um, one of the most profound people is what? Ryan, Ryan Garcia. He's mm -hmm. one of the young bucks really doing big things on his uh, social, you know, but um, it's just something that kids can do straight out of high school. You know what I mean? Um, you almost don't need college with this social media stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just, you just need to be a likable person, somebody that um, is, is inspirational or, you know, or just funny or, you know, whatever, whatever kind of content you're putting out there. All that matters is that it's a type of content that a certain percentage of people want to see, man, you know, don't, don't gotta be Tupac out here. Don't gotta be all eyes on me, but you know, you get a few milli out there and you live in life. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. And then speaking of social media, man, I know you heard the news just like the rest of the world, man. This whole Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul situation that's about to come, that's about to go down in February. I want to ask you, man, um, do you think this um, damages boxing's uh, integrity? Floyd take are doing a fight like this? No, because they're paying Floyd a whole lot of money, so. You know, at the end of the day, when, when Floyd makes his money, you know, it's it's a lot of money. Uh, I mean, you can't ruin the integrity if they're if you're writing checks that big. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, that, that's my opinion. But at the end of the day, man, you know, people are going to say what they want to say, you know. Uh, but like I like I like to tell people, man, we are a part of um, we, we, we call it sports entertainment okay but all it really ever will be is a form of entertainment you know so you know everybody back in the day they went to a boxing fight because they didn't have nothing else to do friday night saturday night you know and you know they they want to go to the ballroom enjoy the show you know hang out with the fellas you know, it is what it is, man. Um, it's That's the way I look at it, man. It's a show. You know, and who better than Floyd, man? I mean, you know, he, he's good at that Cirque du Soleil stuff. You know what I mean? He's good at that Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, but we you got... Know, he knows how to... I was going to say, but we got somebody like Pacquiao who's actually taking on contenders like yourself that is the same, if not... Yeah, but Floyd's done. But Floyd's done. He been said he was done. He's been said he was done. You know, you can't put you can't put responsibility on somebody who's not holding a world title. Pacquiao took my world title. He has responsibility. He don't want that responsibility. Give me my belt back, boy. <laughs> I, would, I would take it back anyways. Give yeah. my belt back. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, uh, there's responsibility with being an active world class fighter. That's what Pacquiao is. That's what Floyd once was. Now. He's doing what he wants to do, putting on shows for all sorts of different people. He did that show out in Japan, made several million dollars for that one minute and a half performance, whatever the heck he had, you know. Um, it just is what it is, man. It's it's not, it's not, it's not elite boxing. You know what I mean? It's not the sport of boxing. It's a show that has boxing in it. That's what you got. You got to separate the two. You got to separate the two and understand what you're watching when you're watching it. You know what I mean? Every time there's two people in the ring and they got gloves on, 
doesn't really mean it's a boxing match. It could be a, a boxing show. That's a that's a boxing show. That's a show. You know what I mean? What me and Pacquiao did, that was a match. So no doubt. You know, I don't think I don't think I don't think Floyd is trying to get matches anymore. I don't think he wants a real match. I think he's satisfied with uh multi million dollar shows right now. Facts, 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 facts. Now, man, I want to ask you, man, like you said, we was talking about numbers and whatnot. Um, do you ever look at your statistics and like I guess not compare and contrast, but look and just be like, hmm, maybe I can do better with uh, more jab percentage or a better jab percentage or or whatnot, or better body shots or whatnot. Do you do you ever look at your stats and be like, hmm, I can I can improve on this? Um, not really. Um, I think that I can improve um, just an output in general, you know, because, you know, my percentage has always been pretty decent, you know, when it comes to landing power punch percentage, which is a big factor in all major fights. Um, jab percentage is, is debatable. Um, you know, a lot of times when we're jabbing, we know if we're trying to land that jab or not, like every jab you throw you ain't really trying to land Alexa that's the kind of fighter you are like Winky Wright back in the day you know when he threw out his jab he was popping you with that jab you know when when EJ throws out his jab he's pinning you down with the jab if it hits you it hits you but otherwise he's pinning you down with it and he's about to hit you with something bigger you know what I mean um so yeah I don't really focus too much on that uh statistics and everything my numbers are good enough I, I can do what I need to do. I can do what I need to do uh, if if I feel like I need to up them. But bump it. Bump the numbers. Just throw more of them. You're going to land. You throw more, you're going to land more. You might miss more, you're still going to land more. It's a numbers game, baby. So just get them punches up. I think a lot of fighters can benefit from just having the right kind of output in, um, in competition because you're competing. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. And then being that, like I said, you're in the you know, a very stacked welterweight division. What, what's that? Order from another side, the other. Side. Yes. I'll just grab it. For you. Oh, thank you so much. Facts. Boom! <laughs> got it. Got my got my order. They 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 window delivering it to me. Facts. They nice yeah. out here. They nice out here. No doubt, man. But um, man, like I said, the welterweight division is stacked with so many big names. And um, you have your picking of the top or the bottom, the the greats, the superstars, and the the hungry up and comers, man. But um, like you said, you wanted to fight with EJ for sure, and even to fight with Terrence, even. But um, as far as showmanship goes and social media goes, and everything that would make sense, will we ever see a fight between you and Adrian Broner? had a few people ask me that question um it's uh thank you so much it's uh it's interesting man um i don't think he i don't think he really puts on a good show because i don't think he fights you know um but outside of that man uh i've had people say man man i want to see you in ab i want to see you in ab i do believe that there is some interest in there i've just never been um uh, offered the opportunity you know um i don't know if if that has to do with anything on on his people's sides when they're picking out fights in the walter weight division you know uh i definitely have a size advantage to him uh you know but he could talk up a good fight he don't fight up a good fight you know what i mean um and i just think i just think that on social media and everything i think Leading up to the fight, he can put on a show, but once when the show starts, the show's over. There's what, a, what? You'll be lucky to see 15 punches around. You know what I mean? And uh, I just think there's better competition out there, man, for the for the for the fans. At the end of the day, no doubt, no doubt. But being that boxing is about entertainment now, and not really much about the athleticism of it in the record. Um, do you feel like that's um, something that, um, as far as like when it comes to setting up fights, do you feel like that's 
messed up that people go based on the the draw or like the type of or the uh, number of tickets that you could sell for fighting the pay per views instead of just like your record for sure for one like oh I only got one loss and I'm definitely the top of the division so why not getting the top why not getting the top so where's so where's my contract so why how come nobody want to fight me all of a sudden yeah right um you know i mean i, I think i think a lot of it definitely i blame covid uh it's been a rough year uh for the whole industry um but i don't know man it, it's it's interesting boxing has always been interesting man it's always been fight by fight contract by contract can we make this negotiation happen can we make this make a fight happen can we get two opposite parties to come together to make a fight happen um it's always been technical like that man uh you know and obviously errol ain't trying to get no lots of pay-per-view buys because i sell pay-per-view baby you know what i mean i i got you know people know what's going on when thurman steps in the ring it's going to be worth the money you know uh i've had fights for free that people were willing to pay for you know uh so it is what it is uh i just you know i just like i just like to fight and put on a good show, man, no matter what happens, whether it's pay-per-view, non-pay-per-view. I just like great competition in the sport. I've always been looking for the great competition. And if I get a great opportunity, man, I'm not the guy to turn it down. You know, I'm not the guy to turn it down, man. So if there's a real real challenges out there for me, then let it come my way. I'll make it happen. No doubt, no doubt. And then being that you're a Florida boy, man, and this is 50, man, so you know we got to talk about the music. And I know you got, Florida got a signature sound in itself, but we got to ask you, man, what is your favorite 50 Cent song or moment? 50 song. One of my favorite songs. From 50, though, right? Uh, I mean, that first album, man, that first album, you know, that first album was, was get rich or die trying. It, <laughs> it just, you know, um, there's just so many bangers on that track, you know, uh, but the one that, the one that I got memories with, man, you know, uh, you know, many men was always a good track, but, uh, Whenever I don't even know the track because all I remember is G -g 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 you net G -g 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 you net man we had a fighter in the ring man he couldn't throw a punch till he heard G -g 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 you net man he'll he throw a ten punch combo all of a sudden on the heavy bag you like man look at this boy here man look at this boy here so just just the whole G unit scene man everything that was being done at that time. Uh, 50 came to Clearwater, man, and, and he put a performance on. He showed up late, and we all waited, and he made it worth our wait, man. That was one real balling um, live performance, you know, on that uh, on a, a great track, a great album that he released. Uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony performed that year. Uh, earlier in the day, there was a little, little JoJo, you know. I mean, we – that – it was Wild Splash. That that concert was called Wild Splash, man. And when 50 performed that Wild Splash, I mean, it was off the chain. He was doing his little gorilla crawl. If you ever remember his performances, he was doing his gorilla crawl, you yeah, know, know. Uh, yeah. vest on. He got the vest on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, to be honest, man, I think I think that performance was better than any, any individual track, man. Just seeing his live energy. And everything like that, man. It, it was uh, it, it was just dope, man. I was a teenager, and um, it was dope. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll never forget that. That was definitely one of the best uh, concerts I ever been to. And he was, and he was the main event. He was the main attraction. No doubt, no doubt. Well, like I said, man, I'm gonna let you get to your food and whatnot. But man, for those that don't know, man, we got Keith One Time Thurman. I don't even know why it's for those that don't know, because everybody know who the fuck Keith One Time Thurman is. If you don't know, I hope. You <laughs> into his face when you say it so man we just look forward to seeing you get back in the ring man like that one loss ain't shit it was you know you're gonna get you're gonna get back to these belts on your 
on your shoulders. You know, your shoulders looking a little light. They need to, you know, they need some darkness on it. I know, right? I know, man. I know. And, and I'm eager, man, because I see these boys fighting, but I don't see no performance. You know what I'm saying? I don't see nothing exciting. I don't see nothing enlightening. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't learned nothing new this COVID. You know, I'm still that real dog. So yeah. thank you for all the love and support, man. You know what I'm saying? Thanks for having me on the show. And uh, stay blessed, man, during these hard times. Stay blessed, always. Yeah, man, we got Keith one time, Thurman. This is 50, man. We out of here. Peace.